All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome uh, to today's webinar provided by Solar Plaza and held in preparation for our upcoming storage exploration tour Germany, which is taking place from the 6th till the 9th of June in Munich and Berlin. The storage tour is a, is a trade mission and a study tour in one. Uh, where we will bring an international delegation from a very diverse background to explore all the, um, the different facets from the uh, German storage market. The, the tour is meant to inspire. You can, uh, can kind of see how things are done in Germany, uh, one of the front runners in the world when it comes to energy storage. And next to that, you will be able to explore uh, the commercial business opportunities and um, meet new business partners and have four full days of networking, which is really something that is of immense value, but an aspect um, of this tour that is very difficult uh, to capture in words. We will go to, uh, to two days to, Mer to Munich and two days to Berlin, so we're visiting two major ho storage hotspots in Germany. Um, and here you will meet, um, we'll, we will be visiting projects that we will have uh, insights from key players you will meet uh, all, these, uh, all these companies and organizations. Um, they will share their, their ideas on innovation, on finance, on the different technologies, um, battery manufacturing, battery testing. Um, we will have, you know, we will have flow batteries, power to gas, and we will end it with a half-day conference of which the information will be released soon. And here you see a selection of the involved organizations. Um, now, if you are interested in joining this tour, be sure to give us a call or get in contact soon. There are only a limited amount of places available, and because it's such an ex uh, extensive event, arrangements need to be made, um, so don't hesitate. Reach out, and um, we can discuss your options and figure out if the tour is a good fit for you. Well, my name is Evelyn, and I'm the project manager at Solar Plaza, responsible for organizing this event and also other storage events. So La Plaza is an independent conference and trade mission organizer that has been organizing over 80 events um, already since 12 years, or we've been doing this for 12 years, and with a focus on the solar PV sector. And now we've also added storage to our uh, portfolio. We already had a very successful event in the beginning of March, and we will keep building uh, from there. We also have many events coming up, of which you can see a selection here. Um, there is our Dutch event, we have two solar asset management events in Asia and in Latam, and we have a trade mission to Argentina and Uruguay focused on solar PV. Um, the, I'd just like to highlight that storage will also be a topic of importance in the Dutch event and in the solar asset management events. So if you're interested in that, be sure to, uh, to come in contact. Now, as preparation for the tour, we organized this webinar and we will look at the current trends in the German storage market to give you an idea of the market dynamics. And for this, we have invited representatives from Clean Horizon and Zonnen to share their thoughts and experience. Now, storage expert uh, Michael Solomon, who is the CEO and founder of uh, the consultancy firm Clean Horizon that specializes in energy storage, joins us together with Samuel Portebo is a senior analyst at the, at the same firm. They will share insights and data on the residential market and on the primary reserve market, two of the main uh, developing segments in the German storage market at the moment. And well, just a short background on them. Michael obtained his PhD at uh, Stanford in the US. After a position as management consultant at McKinsey in Paris, he founded Clean Horizon with the aim to provide technological, regulatory, and business expert information to stakeholders of this industry. Now, Samuel develops the technical and economic models supporting the company's analysis and also conducts training sessions on energy storage in engineering schools and corporations. From Zonne, we have uh, Benjamin Schott with us, uh, joining us as our second contribution. Uh, he is the Director of Business Development and he graduated in business and chemistry and has also completed a PhD in economics. He has held several other positions in business development, consulting and research in the chemical industry and at the Better Research and Consulting Institute Centrum für Sonnenenergie und Wasserstoffforschung in Ulm. Um, actually, during our storage tour, 
uh, we will be visiting the Zona headquarters and we will also have a contribution of, uh, of Clean Horizon. So this webinar is um, it's only a preview of what, we, what is to be expected on the trade mission. Now, just before we start, I would like to point out some practical things. If you have any questions or issues during the webinar, you can communicate with us by typing in the control panel at the right hand side where it says questions and questions directed at our presenters will be collected and we will try to get everything answered in our Q&A session at the end. If you have a question specifically for one of our presenters, be sure to add his name. Now, without further ado, I would like to hand over the session to our speakers from Clean Horizon, Michael Solomon and Samuel Portebo. Thank you, Evelyn. Uh, this is Michael Salomon, Clean Horizon. Thanks for uh, the introduction uh, and congratulations for setting this uh, uh, very promising looking uh, trip, uh, storage tour to, to, to Germany. And we will be looking forward to participating and to uh, having enough time to uh, uh, exchanging and uh, bonding with the, the participants that are going to be interested. So I think Evelyn said everything that needs to be said about uh, Clean Horizon, which is the company I run and by myself. We are, um, let's see if I can just do that. Uh, oh, no, yes. Uh, in, a, in a very short nutshell, Clean Horizon is a consultancy. Indeed, I started it in 2009, so it's been almost seven years. We only do storage. Um, we do market analysis and business development. There's six of us. We're based in Paris. Well, the office is in Paris, but we're based <laughs> where we have to be based uh, given the market conditions. And indeed, we have been looking at Germany uh, for many, many years. So uh, we'll be, we're happy to, uh, to share uh, our visions on this market. And in order to make this discussion impactful and short, we wanted to focus on two, two markets where storage makes sense in Germany. Uh, the residential market and the primary reserve market. I'll talk about the residential and, um, and Samuel will talk about primary reserve. Uh, okay, so I, I'd like to maybe uh, in, 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 the, in the next two slides, I'd like to uh, perhaps very uh, um, simply uh, remind you what we mean by the residential business case for a residential market for, for storage. What we are talking about here is PV self-consumption. So the graphic, uh, the graphic there, sort of explains it, uh, explains it all. In the end, this is very, it's a very, well, it's a very poor drawing. But I guess if the concept in it is right, uh, the logic here is we have, the logic here is we have, um, uh, in orange, uh, the generation curve of the PV on the on your roof. Uh, part of that generation can be self-consumed naturally uh, because you have. Uh, specific loads in, in your house. However, if you want to consume more, self-consume more than uh, what your house can do, you uh, need a battery to shift a bit of the energy that you would otherwise export to another uh, a later time in the day where you can consume your solar energy essentially at night. Both that's the principle and the business case um, is quite simple. Uh, it's actually, a, I would call it a differential business case where you, you have to do the arbitrage between, in the first case, just uh, exporting all of your PV power to the grid, all your energy to the grid, and in this case, uh, being compensated per kilowatt hour at a tariff called the, the feed-in tariff. Uh, so we need a price for uh, uh, the price for, um, uh, for, for, uh, for the electricity. Um, then, um, where, whereas if you have a battery, you can um, you can um, uh, um, how to call it you can be um, uh, you can self-consume more of your energy of the energy produced by the PV in which case there's a bit of energy that is not exported to the grid. However, you have uh, you generate a saving by uh, being able not to consume electricity at a later time in the day. Hence, this business case makes sense if the retail price of electricity is higher than feed-in tariff even if you take into account the overall efficiency of the battery. So that, that is true in the case of Germany. It's, for instance, not true in the case of France. And simple math tells you that on average in Germany, uh, every kilowatt, or, uh, kilowatt hour that you self-consume through the battery 
uh, enables a savings of 12 cents, 12, 12 euro cents per kilowatt hour. So um, if we then look at the next page, uh, that means that if you look at the, I would say, the marginal gain, and I'm, I'm happy to answer that question, uh, uh, questions on that front, uh, if, if, if there's any uh, in, in the Q&A session, the marginal gain in a very simple case of, uh, of, uh, of using the battery needs to be compared to the, uh, the extra cost, at least the capex, you're incurring by buying the battery. Now, in the case of Germany, uh, you, 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 you may have heard, uh, and we'll be happy again to, to chat about this, you may have heard uh, uh, that there are some exemption programs uh, in the country, uh, which is called the KV, KW Program 275, that, cut a long story short, allows you to, uh, 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 to get a rebate on, on the effective price that you're paying for the battery. Uh, nevertheless, if you look at um, uh, a very simple model that we've done here, uh, comparing, I guess, the savings you, you generate from the battery to the extra cost, you're not, you're not quite there yet. Uh, so you're assuming, okay, so, you know, I, I was just telling you that this business case functions and, and you probably heard that there's a lot of residential battery systems in, uh, in Germany, out of which I'm pretty sure Benjamin will, 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 will talk a lot. But if you really look at the economics, it doesn't quite work. And to be more precise, if we go to the next page, We'll see that uh, in the page that in the page page that I just showed, I just showed some unleveraged, uh, uh, unlevelized simple orders of magnitude to show the marginal impact of the battery. Now, if I look at the full business case of a PV plus battery, and if I look at uh, an actualization rate, and if I if I um, uh, look at all of the actualized cost and revenue, you notice that indeed there's more cost than revenue in that business case, so that it generates a negative NPV. But this negative NPV is over 10 years. So simply put, a 4,000 euro negative NPV over 10 years means roughly, taking into account the actualization, something along the lines of 400 or 450 or 500 euros loss per year. So uh, a few dozen euros per, per month. So in the end, uh, uh, for people that are actually used to spending a lot on electricity, if they were making this computation that we're doing here, they would, they would be realizing that putting a PV plus storage is actually not very efficient. They would be better off just putting a PV. But uh, I'd say the joy and the pleasure of uh, seeing a lower electricity bill every month, even though they had to invest a little bit in the beginning, uh, you know, it's 10 years of pleasure versus uh, uh, maybe uh, one not so uh, pleasant uh, uh, economic equation. And as most residential owners, and you probably all are in the same case, nobody does a, a total cost of ownership computation. And uh, a lot of people in Germany uh, actually did cross that, that step and uh, invest in, uh, in, in those, uh, in those uh, batteries to couple with their PV. Actually, uh, and again, pretty sure Benjamin has, has a vision on this, when we looked at various uh, uh, or numerous uh, um, estimations of the penetrations of PV plus storage in the German market, we found that there's over 20,000 over 20,000 that have been installed uh, by the end of uh, uh, last year, out of which uh, probably 60% uh, benefited from uh, the KFW275 program. That's very interesting because I showed you in the previous slides that even with this rebate, uh, we're not yet profitable. Um, but nevertheless, 40% uh, of the people there uh, 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 made the investment uh, re without benefiting from this, uh, this, um, this subsidy because this, they either were not aware of it or thought it was too complicated to do the paperwork. So really, there is a motivation to, um, to, uh, uh, to get uh, uh, something uh, in order to uh, reduce, to get the f intellectual pleasure of reducing the electricity bill. One thing that we have not included in this simplistic uh, computation here is that in some, in some uh, uh, regions, um, some cities, for example, you can get extra rebates on top of whatever uh, the KFW275 program gives you, which uh, uh, makes the economic equation better. Now, question is, uh, uh, and you can feel free to, uh, to read that uh, afterwards, the question is, are we going to see an explosion like we saw in the PV market. As you all know, in the PV market, in Germany, Italy, 
in France to a to lesser extent. It was a very simple equation. We had a feed-in tariff guaranteed by essentially the government or the main utility, um, which prompted a lot of people to you know, jump, in, jump on that secure investment. Uh, actually, so far, and, and we also discussed that in the Q&A session, what we saw very briefly previously is that there are four key variables that impact the business case. Of course, the price of storage, that's clear. Clearly, uh, uh, the amount or the existence of subsidies. But the key, the key, the two key uh, also external, I would say, uh, variables are the electricity retail price, because in the end, the business case of cell consumption is based on saving on the retail prices of electricity, and also the feed-in tariff. Indeed, the lower the feed-in tariff, the better the differential saving is, 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 so then the better the business case. So how will those four variables uh, evolve? Well, it's quite simple. The storage price can decrease, but uh, you know there's a limit to this. Um, we believe, uh, I'm not sure that Sonnen can comment on this or, or would like to comment on this, but our belief is, uh, in the end, very, very simplistically, uh, the, the price of a, of a, of a, of a residential uh, storage system is three-thirds, approximately. One-third is the battery, one-third is the balance of plant, including the power conversion system, and one-third is the installation and everything. So I mean, even if the battery costed zero, uh, you would still have to uh, install it. So, so there's a limit. Uh, that the prices can end up reaching. As far as the subsidies, uh, on their end, they're decreasing. Um, this slide, you don't really see it here because the, the bottom of the slide is cut, but you can uh, ask us and we'll explain the formula. But bottom, bottom line, um, the formula for the KFW 75 uh, a subsidy is such that uh, the subsidy is decreasing every six months by, uh, uh, by some factor which boils down to a, a 60 euro less per kilowatt peak of solar uh, PV installed. Um, uh, now, as far as the prices, uh, clearly um, an electricity retail price may in Germany they're already quite high, so at some point, uh, you know, the voters uh, are going to start being a bit fed up. And it, it looks like in Germany uh, we could have, we could we could be in that region again uh, already, meaning that the prices are so high that at some point it becomes like in other country, countries, some kind of political signal not to increase uh, uh, more the, further the electricity price, which would not be good for us, of course, because we're depending on saving on electricity retail price. On the other side, uh, feed-in tariffs are bound to disappear, so that the, the difference between the the feed-in tariff, if you wish, and, uh, and the retail price is, is bound to increase, which is very good for our business case. If you, if you look back at the one of the very first slides, um, really, we were saving 12 cents per kilowatt hour uh, of electricity not consumed, even though we had a 12 cents per kilowatt hour uh, feed-in tariff. So if the feed-in tariff disappears, now we get a 24 cents, uh, euro cents per kilowatt hour not consumed from the grid, which uh, you know, doubles our revenue and makes the business case, of course, profitable. So, so in the end, uh, battery prices will come down a bit. Subsidies will come down also, but uh, as feed-in tariffs go away, uh, the situation gets better for storage. So we can say that in, in Germany, we think the prospects are pretty good actually for residential storage, uh, such that at some point it will become profitable per se to install it, and more people should adopt it. Okay, so that's uh, first vision. I'm, I'm just going to. Uh, uh, let the floor uh, to Samuel uh, to discuss the primary reserve market, and um, we'll be happy to take questions uh, on residential afterwards. Okay. Thank you, Michael. Uh, so, as Michael said, you talked about the new announcement conference today uh, last November. So I'm sorry, Samuel, I will have to interrupt here. Um, you are not very audible for us. Sorry for that. Is it working now? Yes. Seems to be. Okay. 
So as I said, I'm going to present the, uh, the rationale for the installation of large uh, storage systems on the uh, German grid. You have probably heard of the 90 megawatts that Steag announced uh, last November. So really the question we're going to answer is why do people install uh, uh, these large systems on the grid? Uh, so I don't know if I have control. I don't have control over the... Oh yeah. So here's a figure two. So these large systems that are installed, what they do is provide primary reserve. So here I'm going to just introduce very quickly what is what primary reserve is. So what happens is that on the grid you always have small imbalances between generation and consumption uh, because uh, either because a generator uh, stops or there is a cloud over the PV or because the consumption changes uh, over time. So you, the utility needs to settle uh, the, this imbalance between the two and they do this with what we call frequency reserve because as this as the imbalance goes, um, the frequency of the grid, which is usually 50 hertz, is going to change. So uh, assets that are connected to the grid are um, following this frequency and they act uh, according to the change of frequency. And the fast assets are providing primary reserve, which are the fastest ones. And then we have secondary reserve and tertiary reserve uh, that can complement it. Uh, for the next hours uh, to ensure that there is sufficient uh, generation and that the balance is all uh, that the generation and consumptions are always balanced and the batteries are really interesting for primary reserve because they can act really quickly uh, unlike most assets uh, their response time is not mechanical it's uh, from electronics so it's sub seconds whereas other assets will act in a few seconds or a few minutes and we want things to be as immediate as possible. So this is why batteries are really good. And uh, so what do you get from this service? Because this is a service that you provide to the grid. And what you get is on the next slide. Um, what happens on the German market is that you have an auction every week the, uh, to which people are going to submit bid, bids. And, um, and there's a price for each of these bids that tells you um, how much you're going to earn money for each megawatt that you make available for the grid to follow the frequency uh, following the rules of the system operator. So on these slides, what you can see are the prices over last year for the primary reserve in Germany. So from April 2015 to April 2016, and uh, yeah, so you see two curves. There is one which is the maximum price. Uh, so really, what uh, the, which is the blue curve, which is the uh, the price bid by the last uh, asset uh, to be selected to provide the service, and the red curve is the average price that was bid uh, on this specific week. So we see quite a lot of variations uh, over the year basically uh, on Christmas and New Year's Eve, probably be less people there, so be less competition and higher prices. Uh, and the rest of the time, uh, prices are getting lower and lower over time, and uh, which is a usual trend that we see currently. And uh, so over 12 months, what you could expect to earn was 19.5 euros per megawatt per hour. Uh, the year before that, it was about 18 something uh, euros per megawatt per hour. So if you multiply this by the number of the year that the number of hours that you have over a year, that gets your revenue of about 171,000 uh, euros per megawatt per year, which is actually quite high. And uh, but the problem for this is that well, there is volatility. Uh, you're not sure to be selected, and the prices are decreasing. So you have a lot of uncertainty on this market. But as for, um, uh, for residential systems, we need to compare the gains uh, on this market to uh, the cost of the battery. So this will be, oops, 
uh, next slide. So this is the real uh, bit simplified but quite accurate business case for uh, a 10 megawatt battery uh, providing primary reserve uh, in Germany, assuming uh, prices from yeah last year prices, so 19.5 euros per megawatt per hour. And um, yeah, and we see that we actually get a positive business case because the IRR of such a system is about 7%. Uh, of course, this will completely depend on the, uh, the location, the actual energy cost that you pay, your actual taxes, uh, the installation costs, uh, your battery costs, and so on and so on. And also uh, on the revenues that you actually get on the market because nothing uh, guarantees you that 10 years from now, uh, you will still get 19.5. It's actually much more likely that you will get less than that in 10 years. And uh, this business case is made on 10 years. But with 7% uh, IRR that we could uh, optimistically expect, we can start thinking about installing battery. And uh, some people have already done that. And this is why we have quite a lot of large uh, batteries already installed on the grid. So here's the map of the projects uh, that, that we've seen recently. So the green, the greener batteries are already installed in operational projects, and the uh, yellowish ones are being are in construction and should be operational this year. Uh, one interesting thing, interesting thing on these projects is that actually quite a large deals, large deal of these projects are um, are subsidized. Uh, with local incentives or because there are demonstration projects uh, and so forth. So actually then not all of them are fully commercial, but we have seen uh, uh, fully commercial projects. Uh, so some of these projects are fully commercial, including the one from Steag, uh, the, which is uh, a 90 megawatt in total dividing in six projects. So this means that by the end of the year, we'll get more than 150 megawatt of storage uh, connected to, German, uh, to the German grid and providing primary reserve. So if we look, compare this number to the actual market size, uh, that's not far from 20% of the market size because primary reserve in Germany well, it's not only Germany, it's also, it's common with Switzerland, Austria, and a part of Netherlands. And uh, that represents a market of about 800 megawatts, which is quite small. And it's, a, uh, even though it's a bit growing because new countries are, jo are joining the, ma the market over time, uh, this would be the case of Belgium um, uh, this summer, where well, it will add a few, a few dozen megawatts to, to the market, uh, but batteries are taking a larger place uh, in this market. So the problem is that uh, the competition is increased on the market and uh, this will logically uh, come to a, a decreasing prices uh, on, on primary reserve. So, and one main reason for that is that the, the market is pay as bid, so you need to bid as precisely as, as possible uh, to ensure that you will get selected. So you're really uh, incentivized to uh, bid a, as low as possible price. So uh, in the end, uh, well, at some point the prices will get too low for batteries to uh, to get developed again, so we'll probably see this market being filled up with batteries and with no more space for new batteries uh, in a few years. But we can still expect a few a few installations uh, in the in the next month or the next two years. So this was all for our presentation. So thank you for your attention. And I don't know if there's there are questions. Well, actually, thanks for, for sharing these very, very clear insights, um, Michael and, and Samuel. We will continue to the second presenter straight away, um, but you don't forget to type your questions on the, the right-hand side of the control panel, and we will answer these questions at the 
at the end of the session. Benjamin, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I don't have control, but will you go to the next slide? Have a look. Okay, thank you. So now, now I have control. Yeah. Okay. So what I thank you very much for introducing us to to this webinar, and what I want to show you is an it's Simon as a company as an provider for intelligent energy solutions, um, and I want to give you more insights on our experience on on what we think those energy solutions are about. I think um, Michael and and uh, someone have already given a lot of details on the market, on, on, on the business models which are out there, more from the, let's say, economic part, I think we as a company, we are uh, in the middle of, of selling storage systems since uh, 2016 and um, we think that, that we have a lot of experience already collected and that it's not all about the, the economics. Now. Um, there are multiple use cases in the market for, for those kind of energy solutions we're offering. So in Germany, on the left-hand side, you see that solar day and night, that's the main driver. So as Michael explained, um, using the solar to avoid grid consumption and to reduce the, the electricity bill is the one hand side. The other hand is that customers are really striving for, for autonomy um, to be independent from, from the conventional utilities, from the incumbents, and to, to be as, um, as, as uh, auto um, independent as possible. So there's a strong driver for that, and we see that in, in, in all the other markets, it's possible to generate the own electricity on, 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 on the roof. Um, on the other hand, we see that, that in the future, the, the energy cost optimization, and this may also include the intelligent demarcation management, is a driver to reduce the cost of the electricity bill for, for all of our customers. So they still consume a little bit from the grid, um, and there are Price, pricing tariff structures in certain markets where you have to pay for for your peak for your peak uh, power for your peak demand, and that's where battery enables the flexibility um, to be yeah, to, to to supply when the electricity is cheap or to reduce peak peak demands, which also ha will help the grid um, and the energy market to f to follow supply and demand, um, and then at least whole whole backup that is something which is a add-on or a specific driver in certain markets. But as an energy solution provider you have to look at all of those um, drivers and then to provide a, um, a multiple energy solution and then we want to be at least our strategy is to be a one-stop shop for, for that um, because it doesn't help the customer to have only one piece of that cake. Um, in Germany, at least, um, I think it's, it's in all other markets the same. You, you find a wide variety of, of those energy solutions in the market. On the left hand side, you can see different system typologies where you have DC and AC battery systems connected on the AC side of the home as a let's say, con consumer and you have DC coupled systems. With all the benefits and drawbacks, you, you, you can see um, there. AC coupled system like the sun and battery is much more flexible, connected um, to as a consumer, and you we are um, we can we can easily retrofit to to every kind of, of installation. Also, wind we can include a micro CHP. So there's there's the benefits for for us. on the on the right hand side you can see that also the rate of integration is a, is a differentiation in the market. Um, you can find um, all the components itself market you can purchase them and it's up to the installer to, to configure it to install the system. And let's say the the other edge of, of, of the other end of this road is this is a fully integrated plug, plug and play solution like like this on where where we are as a manufacturer trying to integrate all the relevant components to make a fully operatable system. We are responsible for the synchronization so we are responsible for all that stuff and, and we can add value and through additional features because um, the connectivity to it, let's say a smart home component or a web portal and an app is only possible if, if you control the whole system so um, then it makes it makes most sense. Um, 
we are with the storage system we, we are that's that's why fully integrated solutions are really so important we are at the edge of of several global market market trends and then this is a renewable energy this is the missing piece of our of, of, of the energy market is the storage yeah? so renewables are fluctuating and uh, that's why all of the market experts are expecting a strong growth for, for battery storage within the next uh, five years. The other one is smart home. I think there are already millions of homes equipped with smart home components, but this is, this is what the market is, 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 is expecting, uh, uh, impressive growth. And then digital services, sharing, economy, connectivity of, of, of systems, that's the, the, the next mega trend. So, so some call it Internet of Things, Internet of Energy, whatever is the connection of, of assets of, of data um, and then combined with digital services. And we see already the huge market potential for, for energy management solution storage. This is, this is some figures we have collected from different sources. Um, so you, you, you see the, the growth um, in the, in the Oh, um, yeah, it's to 2015, yeah, so the first column is 2015 for black is residential, the gray is more commercial, not really industrial, but more or less more commercial, so it's not utility scale. And you can see that, that there is an impressive market expectation already. Uh, it will be dominated, and that's one, one of the things I'm, I'm really... Um, um, but I see it's interesting, dominated by residential storage installations within the next year. Although in the US you already have those demand charge management, all the other markets like Australia, Europe will be driven by, by residential. You can see it in the pie chart that looking at the residential, the US will also have a very significant part of that um, within the next five years. Mm. So storage, there are really factors influencing the success of storage. Um, we have to meet the custom market needs. That's, I think that's the, the most critical part because if you look at the economics, Michael said, those are really not there where you might expect it to be. But it's, it's, it's already there that, that you, can, you, can, you can calculate a payback of, let's say, 10 to 12 years if you expect the rising electricity prices in the next year. So that's, that's a an, an custom expectation which on, on a return of, of investment, which is enough. So you don't have to meet investor-related um, IRRs. So, so you can, you, you, you need to, if you're in the market, in the residential market, you need to meet those customer needs. And this is, yes, you have to bring down the cost to in, improve the economics, but this is the, the, the security of supply. It's the, the autonomy. That's the custom driver. And, and that's why we are already successful in, in that market. Um, and uh, on the other hand, we have to ensure our competitiveness. And this is a bring down the battery cost. Yes, absolutely. Cost is a very strong driver. Um, create a favorable regulatory framework. So this is more related to we want to add values to our customers by participating in those kind of primary service markets or, or in the energy market in general. And, and therefore, we also need a more favorable regulatory framework for um, small assets um, and in the end all that requires an intelligent energy solution so full integration of components you have to have to have a one-stop shop if you are um, if you want to be a global player in the market for residential commercial um, we have that with uh, with all our power systems um, but don't lose the customer yeah? you have to have a system which is focusing on, on the customer benefits and, and I think that's the main learning in Germany that, that sometimes the discussions are too much about the economics of that and then too much about looking from the, the old PV thinking of this is an investment for the customer and we need to show an IRR of, of 8%. No, you don't. Yeah. This is an emotional lifestyle product. The customer love it um, and yes, they want to have advanced and, and the cool features and then that's where our intelligent energy management system comes in, um, and that's the the basic to to offer additional services. The energy management solution is a you have you have the perfect hardware, um, all of all in one box with the multiple um, features, and then you have the, the the energy management platform to connect in a home, smart home, and 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 and, and appliances 
you can control those, you connect power to heat, you do control the, the, the terror, the costs attached to it, and you have backup power and all the data behind that. So I think that's a fully integrated hardware solution combined with a fully integrated software solution. And in the end, we want to um, we want to stack value for our customers, but bring those systems also to the grid service and energy market. Um, therefore, we have built our VPP, and we are in Germany already, already an um, um, energy supplier, so we've started the Sunning community as a new service concept, so bringing added value to our customers also by, let's say, participating with the flexibility in the energy market. This means they can now trade their power to others, um, to and also, if you if you if you now look at the economics of the trading power and that small amount, you will find okay, why does it make sense? It doesn't make sense from an economic standpoint. But the customer loves that they want to be independent, and in a community, they can they can be independent in total. They can help each other to be independent, um, and um, we also think that supplying the customer with the cheapest electricity we can. We can use the battery to be better than in, in, in trading and buying power than in all the other traders in the market. Um, we can do that on time and use the battery as the flexibility. And in the end, it's it's a service for the customer. Uh, customer buys the asset, and we we just help them with our software to to increase the value. Um, and then in total, looking at Germany, yes, we have the learnings. Our global headquarters in Germany, that's where we have started. And then the German market, and I have to admit, Michael, the number for 2015, as far as we know, is 18,000 systems in Germany installed. So we have a significant growth and at least a double double uh, of the market size. Um, and to, according to our numbers, the market in Germany has, so one third of each of the systems are subsidized by the KFW program. So 60% of all the systems are not subsidized. So that's, I think in Germany it's, it's also one, one thing that people want to buy, want to buy cash and not, not finance and the evil. And um, yes, the KFW program is also more complicated. Um, not every bank is, is handling that. So um, customers are really buying the systems um, cash, not um, and then leave the, the KFW subsidy aside. So um, 18,000 systems in Germany um, last year. So we are almost at that. We, we are at 30,000 installations um, in Germany, and Sonnen has has a market share of 40 to 50 percent um, in, in Germany in the last year. So um, <clears throat> and the platform we have built, as I said, is a one-stop shop, and we are. We are um, adapting our systems to the to the market requirements in the U.S. So we have a we have a commercial system for the U.S. The U.S. system residential has backup. So we are really looking at the market requirements and are developing systems um, which are scalable across the world, but but also uh, flexible enough to be adapted to um, to each single market like Australia, like Europe, um, and that's that's why we can. We can go global. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Benjamin, also for a, for a very insightful presentation. Um, so it's time now to start the Q&A session. You can keep asking um, your questions via the tool on the right there. We have a large number of questions. Um, I don't think we will be able to get everything answered, uh, but I propose now that I will send the, all the unanswered questions to, um, to our presenters and distribute the answers together with the proceedings um, amongst you. Now I will uh, unmute all panelists. Um, yeah, I'll just, I'll just start right away. Michael, um, one of the first questions is, is there any sort of accelerated depreciation opportunity for solar PV or storage in Germany as seen in the US like MACRS? I see you noted a seven-year debt term. Is that standard? Uh, I think it, the, the debt can go up to 10 years, but this, I, I'm not sure, um, as you hear, the customers are residential, right, so they're private owners, so I'm not really sure there's any notion of depreciation because there's no, there's no notion of tax credit here. I don't know if you, if you, can you hear me by the way? Yes, you can. 
Yeah, so accelerated depreciation applies to a corporation where, um, you know, you have to compute um, um, an amount which is subject to taxes. And then uh, since you, if you have accelerated depreciation, it means that you can, uh, uh, if you make an investment, for example, an investment that lasts 10 years, you can assume that uh, it's depreciated in, in, in three years. So you can, for example, just making this example up, huh? You, you can uh, reduce uh, you can reduce your before tax profit by 33 percent of the investment every year, hence reducing your taxes. But in this case, we're not talking about a corporation; we're talking about an individual for the case. So there's no there's no notion of before tax income that you need to uh, you need to reduce. Uh, now there may be some uh, some subtleties in the German law that I'm not aware of, but usually in Europe uh, you get taxed in your revenue. Uh, as, a, as an individual. So, I mean, right. maybe, maybe, you have a, maybe you have an input on this, but I'm not aware of such schemes. Benjamin, um, do, would you like to, <laughs> to answer that question? I think, yeah, no, I think Michael said um, most of the things. But so, in Germany, usually you don't, you don't find it, so we don't have, we don't have tax credits, so, um, that's not, I think it's not comparable to, to, to the US market at that point. If that answers the question, I don't know. All right, all right. Um, and also, uh, Michael, another question was, like, what's the, the feedback about the recent government found in a study, Merit Order for Energy Storage Systems 2030, stating that batteries will not be the future of grid balancing in Germany, but power to heat and demand side management. So I have to answer this question now. Mm -hmm. So, so, so the question is um, uh, uh, the, about the study that uh, doesn't doesn't feel free to compliment us, Samuel. But uh, the, the question the, the question is okay. According to the study, that the future of green balancing is done on batteries. Uh, mm -hmm. That's indeed that's the thesis of the study. And then what's the question based on the study? Um, but it's more the power to heat and the demand side management. And what is your feedback on that? Ah, okay. No, but in the end, in the end, uh, uh, maybe Samuel could comment because you did this a bit. But in the end, uh, uh, for very short-term uh, uh, balancing of the grid, which in Europe is called primary reserve, uh, I think batteries will do just fine. Actually, they're doing just fine. Now, for very long term, and if we talk about uh, integration, you know, if we talk about 70, 80, 90 percent renewables, intermittent, intermittent renewables powering a country, in this case Germany, um, it will undoubtedly be very expensive to do this with batteries. So necessarily, uh, technologies that are able to store a large amount of energy at a lower um, uh, price per uh, a lower capex per kilowatt hour uh, of storage will undoubtedly be favored. Now uh, we, I mean, I try to so uh, so that's you know that's just a basic thing. What I'm saying just a basic uh, 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 sequence of facts. As uh, as far as I'm concerned, I try to shy away a little bit for from uh, predictions on 2030 uh, for two reasons. Number one, I think. Uh, most of whoever listens to my prediction will have forgotten me by then. And number two, uh, well, we, we tend to be much more uh, down to earth and focused on uh, developing business in, uh, say, one, two, three year uh, uh, time. So whatever happens in 2030, I mean, it's very easy to say anything. And uh, so I don't, I don't really have specific uh, uh, pr uh, perspective opinion to make on this, other than that, indeed, the logical assumption, which is to say, if we need a large amount of storage, batteries are not the cheapest per kilowatt hour installed. Hence, we'll need other solutions rely, relying on hydrogen or, or whatnot. You want to add something? Okay. No. So, voilà. that was All my right. uh, completely correct answer. <laughs> All right. Well, back to back to batteries, though. Samuel, um, do you have a view of what the finance sector thinks of the returns and investment potential? Oops, sorry. Uh, it's, sorry, could you read the question, please? Uh, I'm no, sure. of course. Do you have a view of what the finance sector thinks of the return and investment potential of the primary reserve then sector? 
I'm, I'm not sure I love insight on that, but I'll let Michael answer. So, so the, the question on the return, the, the question on the return is, uh, is um, uh, there's, there's two questions. The, the, main, the main question is linked to bankability. So on, on the return, um, indeed, Samuel showed some slides. The computations are accurate. However, they're based on the average price for 250 in the primary reserve market. Uh, prices are issued from a weekly auction. So there's no certainty that, indeed, what happened last year will happen this year and the following year. So there's a huge um, doubt on the actual revenue and hence the profitability of uh, a primary reserve investment. And in the, in the, in the banking and financing sector, doubt uh, is translated into risk. And risk is usually translated in either higher cost of uh, financing or no financing at all. And in this case, the main issue is there's no certainty on the future revenue. So if I'm lending uh, uh, money to such a project or if I'm investing into such a project, I have 0% reassurance that I will get uh, my money back. And hence, those projects are actually difficult to finance. I'm not saying impossible, I'm saying difficult. And I, we've met uh, many financiers that have uh, gotten away from primary reserve projects in Germany, specifically because no one was there to take away the changing price risk. So uh, the, the numbers that we showed are correct. However, to project them ahead, we have no certainty. And that uh, uh, doubt on the profitability generates uh, uh, poor bankability and hence the difficulty to finance. So it, it, there's a sole notion where uh, you have to differentiate between something which is profitable. This business case inherently is profitable. However, there's an uncertainty on the profitability and that uncertainty makes it very difficult to find money to put in the project. So makes it not bankable. All right. And, and I'm related to that. Related to that. Uh, is that uh, a finance, you will look at the price of the primary reserve, you will not look at the average, you will look at the uh, lower price uh, that an asset could get and could be almost certain to get. And in that case, the IRR is not 7% or 8% anymore, it's closer to 0%. So which is why it's a bit more complicated to, uh, to finance than other projects because uh, yeah, a low case scenario gives you a real low return on investment. Okay, and then related to that, why do you build the business case on 10 years? Can the, can the lifetime of the battery not be expected to be greater than 10 years? Well, it, it's, I mean, some business cases are built on less than that, like seven years, because to, to have a bit more certainty on the market. But yes, the, the battery could last a bit longer than that, even though it would degrade over time. So you need to replace uh, some of the battery modules uh, over time, so which well, in the end, it might uh, bring the business case to, to higher return investment. Uh, but, well, it, it's what you would consider if you compare an investment is more uh, to, to have a chance to get my payback uh, quite rapidly, and then the rest is just an upside. But since I have no certainty for 10 to 15 years, I'm not sure my battery is going to last that long. Uh, so I'd rather just see that as an upside if my project is going well, rather than uh, include it in my business case already. All right, um, Benjamin, uh, I have some interesting questions uh, for you. Yeah. Have you considered CNI storage implementation in Germany based on grid-free exemption for consumers with more than one gigawatt hour and more than 7,000 Volllaststunden? Yeah, so <laughs> I think that, that this is really a totally different kind of market and also a totally different kind of, of sales. Um, we are we are focusing really on residential and small commercial, also in, in terms of our sales structures. We are working with local installers. This is more a mass market orientated business and not a project business. And we are not looking for project business. There might be a business case, but you know the sales cycle is much longer. And you have to you have to have a product for it, and we are focusing on a on a global scalable product platform, 
which is where we also have um, the, the economics of scale in production. So we have decided two years ago to go with the residential product in the market and have, yes, a commercial product for the yes, but small commercial where we have all the synergies we can, we can use. Um, and to cut the, the price of our system by 50% two years ago. And, and that's the reason why we are focusing on that. I think that yes, there is there will be room for uh, for for those kind of products, but it's more more project business. It's you you will have all the local utilities or your local municipalities looking for that kind of customers because they already have that kind of customers in their portfolio. Um, it's it's much harder to sell to residential and customers, and that's where we are good in. All right. And also, um, one question is, how do the power trading work? Uh, how does the power trading work in practice for Zonland customers? Like, does it require special regulation? Um, I, yeah, I, that's that's a more um, complicated answer. But but yes, they sign a power contract with us, so that's that's normal at the market. The trading itself. Um, Time battery enables that from a technology perspective, so you have to have certain regulatory um, conditions like remote control, um, like metering. Um, that's what we do with the sun and batteries, so it's easy without adding any additional cost to the customer, to the technical integration. That's why we can do that. Uh, um, and, and then that's, that's the, 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 yeah, the secret. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and I was, I was also wondering, um, why would customers not use the, the KFW subsidy? Uh, is it simply yeah. because it's so, so complex? Uh, is the complexity of application? No, we have learned, yeah. So, so the, the, I think the, the customers, the share of customers do, um, doing or taking the, the subsidy is, is increasing, but it's still complicated for them to, to get the subsidy and get a bank loan, etc. And they have to finance through the KFW to get this, this incentive. And many people generally don't want to find and say what to pay cash. That's the main reason. Mm. But it's also complicated in the market, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, Michael, I think I'll have a, a last question uh, for you. I what have is to jump out, Evelyn. Sorry, I have to jump out. I have a hard um, cut at five, so I have to jump to Manix. Well, uh, maybe then it's a, it's a good sign to, to just run off the webinar. I will actually send all these questions to you, and then uh, I okay. hope to get your okay. answers. Okay, cool. um, all right, we've Bye -bye. come to the conclusion of the webinar. Um, I hope that we answered as much of your questions as possible. Uh, the best way to inform yourself on these topics, though, would, of course, be to uh, join us at the upcoming Storage Exploration Tour. Um, basically, it is a market report in the form of a four-day visit to the market uh, with the added benefit that you will be networking with all the key stakeholders and with uh, your fellow delegates. Registration uh, at early bird pricing is still possible till the 2nd of, March, of May. And registration for the half-day conference at the end of the tour will open at the beginning of May also. So keep your eyes open for that one. Thanks again for your very kind attention.